God, we're such dorks. That was fun. That, that was, that exceeded my expectations. And I thought we were going to have really nice people because our audiences are yes. really nice. We're both fortunate that way. Well, I was telling people, do we need an intro to this or is this thing? Do you guys know? We just finished a workshop in New York City and it was like life changing. It was good. It was incredible. It exceeded our expectations. It was amazing. We're teaching this thing. We're not supposed to get anything out of it. No, it was like no. Was we awesome. always get something out of it. Teachers was always get something out of it. It was but, cool. Yeah. It was uh, um, yeah. It was amazing. We we had an ambitious agenda. Not only yes. in terms of how much we wanted to pack in over three days, but our ambition for our attendees and what they would get out of it. Yeah, I think so. Um, New York is not geographically huge but it's so much here to cover and I feel like we barely touched it in some ways but at the same time we did a whole bunch of stuff and it was uh, it was pretty it was powerful we had 10 people 11 actually 11 we had yeah. an additional ad at the end who ended up being an incredible addition yes who, and, uh, who contributed. a 14 year old who was like teaching us stuff so that was amazing yeah it was great yeah. it, it, it was it was just fantastic and it's interesting because New York is overwhelming, even to people who were born in New York and spent many, many years in New York, both as a kid and then in my young adult in your, uh, in your age. Formative years. In my, in my formative <laughs> years. We call it something else now, but okay. And uh, the thing that's interesting is we always talk actually about the power of limitations. You have to set limits, yeah. otherwise you get overwhelmed. So we were incredibly fortunate uh, in having some just really wonderful sponsors. And it's important to give shout outs to, Absolutely. shouts out to Hasselblad because we uh, were guests at their New York We did, we did all of our classroom space. stuff at their space, which yeah. is an amazing space. And Dan and Emmy, guys, thank you because you just made it so easy. But it's a wonderful space, not only as a space in and of itself, but it's proximity to everything that we wanted to hit. So, no Radio City uh, Music Hall, none of that stuff, but Penn Station at rush hour in the morning, yeah, yeah we yeah. hit that. We Madison hit that. Square Park. Flat Iron District, flat some iron. of the iconic meatpacking. I have to that. say, we behaved at the, at the Strand. The, the Strand is the bookstore here in New York. The greatest music bookstore ever. We, we, limited, we, we were hungry, so that helped. But, but, my usual trip really would be to hungry. go in, spend a fortune on books, and have to buy a suitcase to, to, we behaved. 
and we, yeah. we shot more. Yeah. Washington Square Park. One of, one of my go-tos. We didn't do Bryant uh, Park no. uh, behind the New York City Public Library. Just for Ghostbusters alone, I would want to get up there. Next time. Next time. Next time. But, but it was great. Chinatown. Little, Little Italy. Italy. NoHo, SoHo, Greenwich Village, Those are Tribeca. All the, the High Line. The High Line <laughs> the High is Line. a victim of its success. Yes. And it's really interesting because I know certain photographs that have been taken along the High Line, which all of a sudden when we were up there, I said to you, you couldn't take that shot anymore because the buildings are going up everywhere. Yeah, actually, so that was that's the big takeaway from the High Line is you're realizing that, that there is a huge section of New York that is changing rapidly. And you don't know it at the time when you're photographing something, but when that view is no longer there, it's, it, it's later, you know what I mean? And, and it was so cool. This may have been a little bit overwhelming for some of our attendees, but it was so cool because one of the things that we did is we shared a history uh, of street photography and photography more broadly as it could be applied to street photography, and we brought books. Yep. One of which was Berenice Abbott's Changing New York. Ah, and of yeah, course, the right idea now. is it, it's always changing. Mm -hmm. And she, in turn, was inspired by Atje, who did the same thing for Paris. I mean, it all just came together. Came together. And the Brooklyn Bridge. We ended it there last night. It was And, and he, it was almost, he almost didn't make it. He was Your back was I have killing a, you. I have a pinched nerve in my back, yeah. but you know I'm a trooper. I'm tough. You full props. I walked the Brooklyn Bridge. Full, and back. And back. <laughs> and, and by the time we got over to the Brooklyn side, I was ready to take the subway back. Well, the funny thing is like when you, when you get over to the Brooklyn side, when you get off the bridge, there's a little bit of walking and navigating, yeah. as you know. And it's like, well, let's just walk back. I was getting B-roll, man. You got to get the shot. And, and again, you know? it... There are reasons to do it, and walking across the Brooklyn Bridge is no less touristy, let's be honest, than going up on the High Line. More but so, if yeah. you're a photographer, oh, you have to do it. It's the view, it. man. Yeah, it's the view. You know, Walker, Evans, and how many people have photographed that bridge? Legendary, and it was, yeah. it was actually part and parcel of some of what we were covering. Absolutely, yeah. No, yeah. It, was, it was cool. It was, uh, it was an amazing experience. I, it's been so long since I've been in New York and, and been able to do something like this. Because the, the problem is, is typically you come up to New York, you've got appointments, you've got stuff, and you're in buildings, you're in the subway, you're not really seeing the city. And this was a wonderful opportunity to do that with, with some, some new friends. And, uh, incredible people. Yeah. Really incredible people. And Claudia was up for the first two days. She had to get back. But we, we agreed, and Ted and I talk about this all the time already. I mean, now we don't need to text or uh, do a Siri call while I'm driving because we're, we're here together. <laughs> but but we agreed that we were privileged oh, to, yeah, yeah. to uh, meet these people, some of whom we knew through the ether, the, the yeah, internet. Yeah. And uh, just wonderful, wonderful people. Our lives are richer for yes, that. Absolutely. I think there's, there's no way around that. Now, You've got a plane to catch. I do. I know, and you haven't quite finished packing. I've got to. Well, I've got to go uh, yeah, immediately home, change clothes, go to the Eamon Carter Museum, and do a talk on Richard Avedon. That's which right. Is tonight, so that's there's right. no rest for the weary, as yeah. they say, or the and, wicked. Yeah, and I don't want to pay both. another sixty dollars a night just for parking. That's just parking. That's just parking for one night. But it doesn't matter because this is my favorite city on the planet, and to do this with you, man, it's been fun, man. It's, Bro. it's been. Incredible. It's been awesome. By the way, also, we have to thank Adorama because Adorama was a sponsor and they covered our lunches, which was really wonderful and healthy. And want to give a shout out to Whitewall because we thought it was really a great idea to make sure that each of our attendees could take yes. the one photograph that they wanted to see and put it up in a beautiful print on their print wall. It, yeah, print so, it takes So on. White Wall made that possible, and we visited there and saw all the things that they could do. Impressive little studio, too. Yeah. They do some nice work, yeah. yeah. So check them out. So, for three blind men and an elephant... And the art of photography. I'm Hugh Brownstone. <laughs> and I'm Ted Forbes. See you next time. It's like we've rehearsed this. <laughs> <laughs> we <No>. have. <laughs>